Good morning. This is Valerie Leonard. I am the founder of Nonprofit Utopia. I want to say welcome and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. We are celebrating in the month of December. We're focusing on our year-end close, looking at things like fundraising and compliance and other things that you need to do to wrap up your year end. Today, we're going to focus on the 30-day compliance challenge. We're challenging everyone who watches this video to take stock of all the filings that they have on an annual basis. That could be to the IRS, that could be to the state of Illinois or your state, your county, um, anything that you need to do in terms of filing a report. And that includes to those people who have given you money. So people who are donors, you want to let them know what you're doing and how you're using that money and the impact that you're making as well. So today we're going to just go over a basic checklist. And if you're here, um, please let us know that you're here. I want to see you in the comment section. So post your name, your organization, and where you're from, and we will be interfacing you know throughout this conversation i'm not going to do a presentation with slides today i just thought it would be better to you know talk to the people face to face and you know if you have any comments you know during this presentation feel free to post and i will uh, answer any questions that you might have as we go along all right so for those of you who may not know compliance is very very important. I've seen horror stories where people were awarded significant grants but weren't able to take the grants because they didn't have their paperwork in order with the state of Illinois. I mean, these are like hundreds of thousands of dollars that they had to forfeit because they did not have their paperwork in place. In fact, you know, this is such a common problem in the United States alone. There are over two point five million nearly 2.6 million organizations and of those nonprofit organizations that are registered to be tax exempt 35 percent have lost their tax exempt status that means over 800,000 organizations in the united states alone have lost tax exempt status and this is just because they did not file form 990 on time for three years in a row all right. So if you fail to file 990 for three years in a row, you automatically lose your tax exempt status. And that's called automatic revocation. Now, that has nothing to do with a host of other reasons why people can lose their tax exempt status or lose their good standing with the state. So we're going to go over today, you know, all the filings that you need. Um, especially for the state of Illinois. Now, if you're not in the state of Illinois, still listen in, you can adjust what I'm saying to your own situation in your own states. Um, even though every state is different, there are some stark similarities between the way you know various states handle nonprofits, right? So the first thing you should do is take stock again of all the filings that you have. So this would be filings that you would have with your funders. This would be filings that you would have with the state. This would be filings that you would have with your county, as well as with the federal government. And then you want to list those out. And then you want to um, make a calendar as to when those due dates occur. So for us, this checklist includes uh, filing with the Secretary of State. So every year you have to do an annual report with the Secretary of State. So that would be um, Jesse White's office, Secretary um, Jesse White. And this report basically lets the state know who is on your board of directors. So every year you have to file that. And it's a $10 fee and $3 late fee. All right. You also want to conduct an annual audit. You know, organizations that have funding of over $25,000, it's recommended that you do an audit. If you don't have funds to do the audit, then you should probably get an outsider, um, preferably a CPA to do what we would call a compilation. 
which is putting your books in order, you know, in a format that is commonly used and in a format that we call GAP, generally accepted accounting principles. And, you know, this gives you a layer of objectivity as well as professionalism when you're sharing your financials. And if you don't have funds for that, then at a very minimum, try to put your books in order through QuickBooks, all right? And use the accrual accounting method as opposed to cash accounting. All right, and then again, as I said two times already, you wanna make sure that you comply with all grant requirements, and that would be grant requirements from your funder. So that could be city, your foundations, and anybody who has given you, say, um, a cash donation with the expectation that you're using the money in a certain way, you want to be accountable to them as well. All right. There's no funder who is you know too small to thank or too small to be accountable to. All right. You also want to file form AG990IL, and that is the state of Illinois equivalent or counterpart to the IRS Form 990, all right? And you do that every year, and that is due five and a half months after your fiscal year end. So a number of organizations have their fiscal year ending in December, so that means by May 15th, they need to file Form 990. A number of folks do their um, fiscal year end in June, so that means, you know, say, November 15th. So whenever your fiscal year is ending, five and a half months later, you need to make sure that you file your Form 990. Again, if you're late with your file, your Form 990, and if you do that for three years in a row, not just be late, but just not pay for three years in a row, you are in definite danger of not only being losing your tax exempt status, but you are also in danger of being taxed uh, with interest and penalties, and you really, really don't want that to happen. All right, so you have to file Form 990 again um, within five and a half months of your fiscal year end. So you typically file your Form 990 and your AG 990 IL at the same time. And if you have an accountant, it's best, I think, to have your accountant to do your Form 990 and AG 990. AG 990 uh, IL at the same time and you know and let them do it all right the same time that they're doing your books and usually this might happen when they're doing an audit so whoever your auditor is let them do the 990 and if you have a bookkeeper who is keeping your books you know, let them file it for you as well obviously you have to make sure that it's correct and the executive director and or president of the board needs to sign off. All right, and then you wanna make sure too that any information regarding your registered agent is correct. So when we talk about the registered agent, that's the person that is responsible for doing all of their filings. They receive all of the uh, notices from the IRS, all the notices, from the state, any official notification goes through your registered agent. I've seen instances where people forgot to notify the state of a change in their registered agent. And as a result, they didn't get any notices about you know, filing form 990 in time. Well, yeah, they yeah, for about three years, they never got any notices and they didn't really know that they were supposed to be filing form 990. And as a result, they, finally got a nasty letter from the IRS threatening to take away their tax exempt status and impose all kinds of penalties and interest. All right. So it's really, really important that you make sure that if there's a change in registered agent that you let people know so that you can get all of the notices and be well prepared to respond. All right. And then you want to make sure that that you file quarterly nine form 941 and that is for your payroll taxes so not only do you have to do form 941 for your payroll taxes but you um, also have to do the state equivalent of 
Form 941. So Illinois has an IL 941. And I would imagine that if you're from other states, your Department of Revenue is checking on you with respect to property taxes. All right. And you want to make sure that you renew your exemption from state sales taxes. So every year you have to file form STAX-1, S-T-A-X-1. And then if your organization owns property, you want to make sure that that property is exempt from taxes. So you want to go to your county and file any paperwork that's necessary to get your tax exempt status. And the city of Chicago is located in Cook County. And usually what that would mean is um, doing an appeal to the board of review and then sharing a number of documents to demonstrate that you are indeed uh, tax exempt from federal income tax. And then you can apply for tax exempt status as, as it relates to property taxes. All right, and if your organization is relatively new, you may or may not have known to complete form Reg 1, and that is a form that you file with uh, the Department of Revenue, you know, registering with them. Every business needs to file, and that puts them on record, right? And you have to indicate whether or not you are for-profit or non-profit. And then you also need to make sure that you file with IDES, you know, file and let the folks know about any unemployment insurance that you might have. Now, if you're a nonprofit, you're not liable for any um, unemployment insurance until after you get four employees. But if you're a for-profit entity, then, you know, you need to file immediately and you immediately become um, eligible to pay unemployment, you know, after you reach a certain threshold of paying payroll. All right, so are there any questions, any questions or comments? And then if you are a nonprofit, again, with the exception of religious institutions, you have to pay state unemployment taxes. Again, this is once you get four uh, employees and after you paid them over $1,000, all right? And if you didn't do so at the time of incorporation, make sure that you're registered with the Attorney General's Office of Charitable Organizations. Every organization that is engaged in fundraising has to make sure that they are registered with the state of Illinois Attorney General's office. And that's the office where you also file your AG 990 IL forms. So if you have not filed that form, you need to file um, CO1. And then you need to also make sure you do an AG 990 IL form for every year that you've been in existence. You're gonna to have to pay a registration fee as well as a late fee for every uh, report that has not been filed. All right, so that is a checklist of all the filings that you need to do if you're in the state of Illinois. So um, those are filings at the state level, those are filings at the Cook County level, as well as the requirements for, for the um, United States. All right, again, if there are any questions, um, please feel free to post any comments, any questions. All right, so at this point, we want to invite you to join our 30-day compliance challenge, all right? It's, we're looking for people to actually, you know, take stock of all of your paperwork. We're willing to help you through it. If you are a member of the Nonprofit Utopia community, you can actually, you know, set up office hours and we will sit down with you and go over the paperwork with you. If you are not a member, we invite you to join the 30-day compliance challenge as a coaching client. And we have information about that on our website. So let me see if I can, if I can share our screen um, just 
for just a moment. I want to share the screen and share with you what this looks like on our website. Oh, you know what? This is the wrong. <laughs> this is the wrong one. Excuse me. Um, I was looking for nonprofit <laughs> utopia. That is our. That's our community. Um. So let me. All right. So let me know if if you are seeing our website and if you're not seeing it. Okay. All right. Um Wow. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we got a comment from Gloria Smith, very informative, and she indicated that um, sometimes the city of Chicago license might be needed. Thank you, thank you so much for that. And if you would be so kind, Gloria, if you're still here, um, if you can share an instance where a nonprofit might need a Chicago license, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of a situation where you might be running a nonprofit daycare facility or something like that, or some sort of, uh, if you have a nonprofit healthcare facility. If there are other instances, you know, please feel free to share in our comment section. And I'm going to um, share my screen again and hopefully go to the website instead of Yeah, instead of our community. All right, so this is the Nonprofit Utopia website. This is the blog post where we actually talk about the compliance challenge. And those of you who are members of Nonprofit Utopia, uh, you have seen something similar to this inside the community. This is for people who are not part of the community. So basically, again, we're reminding you that over 899,000 organizations throughout the United States have lost their tax exempt status. And this is just because of failure to file form 990. And what we would do with you with the 30 day compliance challenge, you know, we'll share with you who all the players are in terms of compliance. And that includes you as the organization and your role that also includes the community as well as the foundations and various government entities. And then in the event that you have any problems, you know, we'll help you to take any corrective action. And that includes those instances where you're being threatened with losing your tax exempt status. That also includes those instances where you have lost your tax exempt status as a direct result of not filing form 990 for three years in a row. So we'll help you clean that up. And then we'll also make sure that we can share strategies with you, you know, in the event that you find yourself in such a sticky situation where you're working with the IRS to, you know, get things right. We'll also work with you not only to get out of that mess, but to put strategies in place such that you don't have to go through that again. And what our approach will be is we'll make sure that it's a done with you approach that means you'll do the legwork we will coach you through the process we will make any corrections on your forms as need be you'll get a checklist of all the documents that you need to make sure that you're in good standing with the state and federal government we'll work with you to get a plan of action based on your unique circumstances we will also share with you any session notes from the coaching and any assignments so that you will keep on track this is an evidence-based process where all the work that you do is recorded. So at any given time, you'll be able to see where you are in your process and stay on track. All right. And this also includes document review. 
So our fee for this is $150 per hour. And we would advise that you do as much of the upfront work as possible before any session so that we're mostly in a mode of education and then document review as opposed to spending time um, pulling documents together. Okay. All right. Are there any other comments, any other questions before we go? And also before we go, I wanna encourage you to go to our Instagram page. Um, our Instagram page, I'm gonna share that with you now. Our Instagram page is very informative. You know, not only do we use it for social media, but we also use it for education purposes. Um, we wanna thank Carlini and she has, uh, she tends to, she manages the page and she shares a lot of information that is of use. And we've shared with you the compliance challenge. And we also shared with you some factoids that you might find pretty interesting as it relates to nonprofit compliance. You know, for example, you may not have known that Chicago organizations make up 26% of Illinois organizations, but we make up one third of the organizations that have lost their tax exempt status because we didn't file form 990 for three years in a row. So again, follow us on Instagram. I guarantee you, you will find a lot of really good information. So we're not just using it for social purposes. We definitely focus on the educational component. Okay, and thank you, Gloria, for getting back with us. She indicated that their organization has been filing a city of Chicago business license renewal for a few years, and she suggests that organizations investigate whether it's necessary. That's a very, very good point. Thank you so much for that, Gloria. All right. So without further ado, I want to invite you guys on. Oh, OK. Before before I do that. Thank you, Gloria. Um, City of Chicago's phone number 312-744-6249. Or you can go to chicagobusinessdirect.org for more information. And that way you can speak directly with the people from the city of Chicago, let them know what business you're engaged in, whether it's nonprofit or for-profit, and they will advise you as to whether or not you need to have a city license. Thank you, Gloria. That was very, very helpful. All right. So I, I love this exchange of information. I learn as well as you. So this is a learning community. All right. So before we go, I want to remind you that we're going to have another live stream on Monday. We will be talking about the importance of transparency and disclosure as it relates to year end reporting, as it relates also to your fundraising efforts, as well as for your management efforts. We're going to have one of our own members to come and she's going to speak with us and let us know. Um, Roberta Coleman. She is the founder of Cabot House, and she is going to share with us how they went about working with GuideStar to disclose information over and beyond what's necessary in the Form 990. So they not only uh, are up to date on their Form 990s, but they took the information that is recorded in the Form 990 and built upon it and disclosed even more information so they have disclosed so much that they are now at the highest ranking in terms of disclosure that one might get from GuideStar. And for those of you who don't know who GuideStar is, um, GuideStar is an organization that tracks information uh, for all of our nonprofits across the country. So anytime you file a Form 990, that Form 990 also goes on file with GuideStar. 
And they use that information to call together a number of reports. So you can get reports in terms of um, performance management and get a sense for where your organization ranks with other against other nonprofits. But the most important thing is they share your profiles for Form 990 and any fundraiser, any funder who is interested in your organization can pull that information down, whether you give them permission or not. It automatically goes up. But they also have a product called GuideStar Profiles. So they give you a rating based on the amount of information that you disclose. And the more you disclose, the higher your rating. So they have, Kabad House has actually gotten a platinum rating. So Roberta is going to share with us how they went about getting that rating and how it has impacted their fundraising efforts in a positive way. So that will be Monday, December 21st at 10 o'clock. All right, stay tuned and thank you again for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at Valerie F. Leonard at nonprofitutopia.com. Feel free to visit our website. We've got a number of articles, I think, that can help you through this situation and more. And make sure that you sign up for our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. So go to YouTube and go to Nonprofit Utopia and sign and subscribe. All right. So take care and thank you again for joining us. Bye-bye.